Let's look at some examples where the root test applies. So I'm going to try n going from 1 to infinity, natural log of n over n, raised to the nth power, times x to the n. So the ratio test, if we try to push that through, we see that this is going to turn into kind of a mess. You, know, you could do this, but why would you want to when you've got a better technique? So the root test just says, take your sequence, take that term, take its absolute value, and then take the nth root. So when I do that, that's going to leave me with limit n going to infinity. I'll be able to drop the absolute value sign for the natural log in the n, because as n gets bigger than 1, natural log is always positive, and so will n. So we'll have to keep the absolute value around the x, but you notice when I take the nth root, it's going to remove all of our exponents. Now here, to get this, note, x is just going to be some fixed number. So what's going to happen? Um, well, two things. If x is equal to 0, that's going to 0 out the top, and then this limit's just going to go to 0, and then the root test is going to apply, our series is going to converge. But it won't be very interesting, because if I put 0 in for x, we're just going to keep summing up zeros, and our series is going to be equal to 0. So if x is not 0, then it's just going to be some number, which we could pull out in front. So we're really looking at natural log of n over n. If we take the limit as n goes to infinity, that's going to give us an infinity over an infinity that's an indeterminate form, which means I can apply L'Hopital's rule. So if we take the derivative of the top over the bottom, derivative of the bottom, we'll have 1 over n over 1. And then as n goes to infinity, that's going to go to 0. That's strictly less than 1. So note, since our x didn't matter here, our series is going to converge for any x that you choose. So our interval of convergence is going to be all real numbers and our radius of convergence is plus infinity. Next example, let's try sum going from 1 to infinity, n to the n over e to the 2n times x to the n. Same procedure, we're going to put our sequence element in absolute values and then take the nth root, and then take the limit as n goes to infinity. What's going to happen here? Well. For each term, we're just going to take the nth root, so it's just peeling off all of the n's. So it's going to leave me with n. We can drop the absolute value from that. We'll have our x in absolute value, and then our e squared. Well, that's just the number. e is roughly 2.7, so there's no point keeping the absolute value on that either, since e is a positive number anyway. I take my limit as n goes to infinity, and then two things will happen. If x is equal to 0, then we're going to note the top goes to 0, and so we're just taking the limit of 0, which is going to be 0. So when x goes to 0, it's going to converge, but it won't be interesting because we'll just be taking sums of zeros. If I suppose x is non-zero, then what's going to happen? We can pretend the x is out in front, and then we're just looking at the limit as n goes to infinity. That's going to blow up to plus infinity, and so this is going to diverge for all x but 0. So we're only going to be defined at x equals 0. Interval of convergence is the point 0, and our radius of convergence is 0. OK, next example, I need a whole board. We have sum going from 1 to infinity, n over n plus 1 raised to the nth power times x plus 2 raised to the nth power. We're going to apply a root test, because that's going to be the easiest way to strip off those powers of n. So do the limit nth root of absolute value n over n plus 1 to the n, x plus 2 to the n. Net effect is just going to be the nth root takes away the powers of n and leaves our x plus 2 inside absolute value signs. Limit of this as n goes to infinity, well, n over n plus 1 is just going to go to 1. So we're going to be left with absolute value of x plus 2. So this item here for the root test We'll get convergence when this is strictly less than 1. So I'm going to take this and decode it. Decoding just says we're going to take a, our 1 here, leave it where it is, and then on the other side we put a minus 1. I want to get rid of the 2 in the middle. So I'm going to add a minus 2 to each term. That gives me minus 3, less than x, less than minus 1. Okay, I'll draw the picture for that. So we notice the center is going to be minus 2. That's what we would guess by looking at this. This is x minus the center, or x minus minus 2. 
So the distance from minus two to either minus one or minus three is gonna be one. So that's my radius of convergence. Let's look at the endpoints. Minor nightmare. All right, the first one, let's look at x equal to minus one. So if I put a minus one in here, we're just looking at one to the n, which is gonna be one. So we're looking at the series and going from one to infinity, n over n plus one raised to the nth power. I wanna show you that this diverges. So it's gonna diverge by the limit test for divergence. We're just gonna show that our limit of the sequence is gonna to go to a number that's not zero. And that's gonna mean our series can't be convergent. If it was convergent, the limit would go to zero. Okay, this is tricky. So my first step is, I don't like this as a base. If you notice, we're gonna have, if I let n go to infinity, an indeterminate form, one raised to the infinite power. So the way I'm gonna deal with this is by getting rid of the n, n plus one as a base. I do that using e to the natural log of anything equals anything. So I'll get rid of this as a base just by using e to the natural log of n over n plus one. If we look at this, okay, as n goes to infinity, n is gonna to go to infinity, and then natural log of n over n plus one is gonna to go to natural log of one, but natural log of one is zero, so note, we get another indeterminate form, zero times infinity. So let's just take the exponent and move it off by itself and work with it that way. All right, so what I'm gonna go for then is gonna be zero over zero, which will be an indeterminate form where we can use L'Hopital's rule. So the way I do that is I'm gonna take the n and flip it to the denominator as one over n. So these, when we let n go to infinity, that's gonna to go to natural log of one, which is zero, and one over n is gonna to go to zero. So we have zero over zero. I can take derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom, and then we'll retake the limit. Derivative of the bottom, well that would be n to the minus one. Taking the derivative of that would give me minus n to the minus two. Okay, so if I have an n to the minus two in the bottom, I can move it to the top as n squared. And that's also picking up a minus sign. So that takes care of the derivative of the bottom. Derivative natural log of n over n plus one. What's the rule? We're going to take whatever's in the box and flip it over, flip it into the bottom. Since this is a fraction, flip into the bottom just means flip it over. So that's going to turn into an n plus one over n. Then since we're looking at natural log, I got to take the derivative of the inside. So it's going to be the quotient rule, which is going to be derivative of the to top, which is one, times the bottom, which is n plus one, minus the top, times the derivative of the bottom, and the derivative of the bottom is one. So our numerator is just gonna be a one, the n's are gonna cancel, and then I divide by the denominator, which is n plus one squared. All right, you stare at this, what's happening? We're gonna have one of the n plus ones in the bottom canceling, and then one of the n's in the top canceling. So I'll we'll be looking at the limit of minus n over n plus one, which is gonna to go to minus one. Now that minus one is just gonna be the exponent on top of here. So e to a power, e to the x is continuous. So you're allowed to take the limit and move it to the top. So our limit's gonna be for our original thing, the limit of the sequence, it's gonna be e to the minus one. All right, that's all this right here. And that's not equal to zero, so Series does not converge, it diverges by the limit test for divergence. Now here's a little interruption. Okay, this thing seems extremely unlikely. So how do you check it? Well, we're doing limits out to infinity, so you just take a big number and stick it into your sequence. So if I take a thousand, I take a thousand over a thousand and one, and then take that to the thousandth power in my calculator, I get 0.368 and that's gonna be roughly what this is. So while I don't believe that on first sight, easy enough to check. So that means x equal to minus one, not gonna be included in my interval of convergence. How about x equal to minus three? Well, give you a kind of a hand wavy explanation for this. So this limit, again, we're gonna use the limit test for divergence. This is gonna diverge. It's not even gonna to go to a non-zero point, it's just gonna oscillate all over the place. So let's take a look. What would the picture be? The points are gonna bounce between one over E and minus one over E. So our picture's gonna be, if you plot out a few points 
you know, pick them large so you can see what's happening. What you're gonna have is that all the even terms are gonna congregate around one over E, and all A sub I terms are gonna congregate around minus one over E. So you'll see that they're just gonna bounce back and forth, not between the exact points, but just in a neighborhood of them. So there's no way that that's gonna to converge to a single point, so they're gonna to have to diverge. So that's gonna say X equal to minus three, not in my interval of conver convergence either. So that's my interval of convergence, and then we have our radius of convergence equal to one.